What is up everybody? My name is Alex and this is the Reefer Madness edition for 420 and welcome to Comic Addicts. Let's take a dab today, huh? Today's session is Reefer Madness session. Welcome to Comic Addict. Good morning, son. How are you? Skies above. Happy 420. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. And we're back at it like Comic Addicts. And today's video has to do with Reefer Madness. However, be that as it may be the chronological index does seem to show some interesting patterns first note that the first actual reefer madness comic books story seems to appear on october 1937 which by coincidence is also the same date that the marijuana tax act effectively outlawing medical marijuana took effect this has leads many to assume maybe with some justification that comic books of and by themselves played no role in the actual creation of the anti-medical marijuana laws. However, this ignores the fact that comic books as we conceive of them today did not exist until around this date. Before this time, comics, for the most part, were nothing more than reproductions of newspaper comic strips. But in any case, as it can be seen from this chronological listing, Comic books seem to have played a big role in maintaining the hysteria against its use. The golden age of comic books started around 1937 and then came to an end in 1955 with the creation of a self-censorship code known as the Comics Court Authority, Code Authority, CCA, which among other things ended any mention of medical marijuana. Thus, it is no accident that with the exception of a few publishers like Dell, the Reefer Madness era of comic books also ended in 1955, by the time that Comic Book Code once again allowed its mention in the late 1960s. The Reefer Madness era, at least the hysteria, was long over the general public at large, simply knew too much to accept the lie. I will be giving you... 10 reefer manis comic book issues and they will be in chronological order so let's go at number 10 we have have g-man versus the red x from 1936 by stefan slingser this big little book number 1147 consists of 424 pages a children's reefer manis companion Publisher Whitman Publishing Company. On to the next one. At number nine, we have More Fun Comics, number 25, from October of 1937. The Marijuana Racket, part one, a Johnny Law adventure. Note the date. This may be the first Reefer Madness story out there, and a horror one it is. Story concern starts out when a young marijuana addict shoots dead shoots dead an innocent woman this puts johnny law on the hunt for a gang of marijuana peddlers chief i don't care how we do it but we must stop this peddling of dope kids the kid that did the shooting this afternoon was a victim of marijuana johnny the marijuana peddling isn't an ordinary rocket it isn't done by organized crime but by small-time racketeers Needless to say, Johnny thinks differently. Well, more fun continues on more fun comics number 28. And this is the Marijuana Racket Part 2, Johnny Law Adventures. Uh, publisher is Detective Comics from St. Louis. And issues from 1938. The more fun comics number 28. And number 7, we have Action Comics number 8 from January of 1939. The Marijuana Farmers. Knows exactly where the story title came from. None is to be found in the comic. The plot was five star reporter Scoop Scalinon, following up on a tip given to him by the G Man, investigating the strange goings on out in the country. Soon the action begins as someone shoots his car, tires, etc., and Time Scoop sees a field of marijuana, etc. Again, 
this story is not recommended for reading. Moving on to at number six, we have Adventure Converse number 39 from June 1939. Highly recommended. This episode of The Federal Man by Siegel and Sh- Schuster, the creators of Superman, has an ace G man, Steve Carson, tracking down a school janitor who's selling marijuana to innocent high school kids. The case begins after a group of youngsters rob and kill a gas station attendant and then drive off waving hazards and hit an innocent pedestrian, all under the influence of marijuana, the weed of madness. This leads Steve Carson to a high school where he matches wits with a dope peddling janitor. Great unforgettable storylines such as marijuana, the drug that causes the smoker to lose all moral restraint, then this case comes under federal jurisdiction. So, publisher is Detective Comics. Moving on to number five. We have Detective Comics number 35 from January of 1940. Hippo cover, not a drug comics. It's just that the cover has a hippo on the cover. Big and there is a story. Speed Sounders. Ace Investigator and the Voodoo Vengeance that mentions Hampton. At number four, we have Smash Comments number nine from April of 1940. Marijuana's story in this issue, Click Carter, crusading reporter, busts a ring of pushers peddling dope marijuana cigarettes. Now moving on to number three, we have the Blue Beetle number four from 1940 the blue beetle must stop a gang of marijuana dope peddlers that seem to be selling marijuana to high school age young people the story seems to follow the same one that was used in the blue beetle radio program but here the word marijuana is used more than once publisher fox feature comics Coming in at number two, we have Teenage Dope Slaves from 1940. Teenage Dope Slaves, as exposed by Rex Morgan, MD. This is an anti-drug comic book, not a reefer madness story. Marijuana is mentioned only in two or three panels and only by the name of weed. Only the first seven pages of over 20 pages are publisher Eclipse. Coming down to our number one and final book, we have The Green Mask number three from 1940. Gangbuster Robinson. The comic does have a marijuana mensch story in it, but it's not a green mask story. Instead, it's a Gangbuster Robinson by Harold Benz. Story, the story involves a newly appointed prosecutor who, bottle, who battles against a gang of dope peddlers. Needless to say, the dope is medical marijuana. Not really a reef for madness story, but worth reading reprinted from wonder comics number one publisher fox feature syndicate and that was happy 420 